Well, welcome to another live stream. Here we are. Here I am. I'm Wizard Foo. If you don't know me, uh, well, well, I'm a game developer. Um, <clears throat> today I'm going to be working on some um, improvements to the voxel shadows. Let's take a look at uh, some. Let's run the game here. See what I'm talking about. So uh, the last couple days I've been working on shading of voxels and things have really improved a lot. Um, what used to happen with uh, the shading of all these voxels here was that we would have a, a, a non-uniform uh, shading. So some of these pillars, these little pillars of stone here, they were, they were drawing as if they were from a different, the light was from a different angle. Now we've got all, the, all that being drawn from the right angle, the correct angle I mean, and uh, the um, it was quite a trick to get done because technically um, there's four, eight different model rotations and there's also eight different light rotations. So that could be up to 64 different models that have to be computed for every single one of these pillars, especially if there's different colors. So if one of these is a slightly different color than another, that's another 64 different models that have to be created. And so with this entire arena of, of full of different colors of all these different uh, models and stuff like that. There's a lot of work to be done when you when you're starting the game. So um, I've got it down to a pretty reasonable level at this point. But so what I'm working on now um, is the shadows. So um, right now these shadows actually look pretty good coming from the player. Uh, there's an issue right here. You can see where it's a little, it's flickering a little bit. There's another entity that's causing this entity to, to redraw in, the, in in improper fashion. So that's that's another task though. That's that's something else that has to be done. What ha what I'm working on now is it looks really good right here. This angle, this shadow looks awesome. But let's let's rotate to this angle, and now all of a sudden we have this tiny thin shadow that just looks really really horrible. It's like uh, barely even there. And that's because a lot of the voxels that would be casting shadows have been occluded. So, you know, there's there's a bunch of voxels that make up this model. Let's look at them here in uh, in this Magicka right here. Right? Here's, here's all the voxels that make this up. This guy's not hollow on the inside. He's got voxels on the inside too, right? But there's a lot of voxels that don't need to be drawn, and they get occluded because the, the, game, realize, the game engine realizes that, oh, this voxel... Is behind that voxel for example um, we can't see the back of his hair right now right so like this um, voxel right whoops we're in face mode there like that exact voxel is not visible from this angle so he gets occluded and because all all these different voxels are getting occluded then it's not casting the shadows properly so my goal for today's stream and I only have an hour to do it uh, an, an hour to, to do my live stream is um, to make those shadows look really nice and that's gonna be I'm gonna have to make it so it doesn't occlude those models or occlude those <coughs> those voxels if they're casting shadows but also need to make it so the color of them is zero so it doesn't go trying to voxel paint them stuff like that so this could get tricky but let's see if we can make it happen oops Okay, so we're going to go to model, and the first thing we have to do is um, not occlude th things if they're, uh... actually, heck, let's just not even occlude any voxels right from the get-go. <laughs> let's see if that makes the shadows improve. If it doesn't, then my whole premise is wrong. Okay, good. Let's stand at one of those. Oh yeah, see, it's, see how the game dropped down to 20 frames a second when I rotate the camera? That's because we're drawing like way, way more voxels. But, look at that. We do have some really nice looking sh shadows there. There's a problem with the Skybot causing it to clip. Let's turn off the Skybot for a second. Check. Um, let's check how much CPU you, I'm using. 
this new version of game show. Okay, that's really really reasonable. Good. Okay, I can continue using this version. Great. Okay, we've got the Skybot turned off. Um, we know that if we do not occlude any voxels, we're drawing some nice looking shadows. Let's confirm that once more. With the Skybot gone, we can see the shadows a little bit clearer because of that other issue I mentioned at the beginning of the stream. Okay, so I'm just going to walk over here, and yep, see how much nicer that shadow looks? It's looking good. Good from all angles. Okay, so the well, yeah, the first thing we're going to we're going to tackle is um, the fact that we're going to have to do the shading before we do the rotating, occluding, and all that. Okay, and that means that Basically, oh shoot. See, we have we need to trigger the loading of the original cache. First thing we have to do is trigger the trigger that loading of the original cache and then do the shading, and then do the rotating, projecting, including. Okay, so this else method right here. Yo, it does. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually up in Canada right now. I'm sort of quasi vacationing I'm working during the during the days but uh, traveling on the nights and the weekends and I'm up here well, all the way up in Canada in a place called Banff I don't know if you've heard of it but it's like there's just mountains all around and streams and waterfalls I'm in a little bit of paradise I love mountains how about you man what's what's going on how's the game release going dude are you getting there or what I, I remember when I was releasing Songbringer I I hated when people ask me that question, so you can totally ignore that question if uh, if you like. Yeah, it's been really beautiful, really nice. I mean, uh, uh, last last weekend too, I climbed a, a new mountain. That's kind of like a life goal of mine. Is like every year I want to climb a uh, mountain and a new one to me. And uh, last year I climbed Mount Thielsen. This year I climbed this mountain called Mount Rundle up here in Banff. And it was really cool, really satisfying. But I was so sore afterwards. I've been sore all week. I, don't, I haven't even wanted to hike this whole week. But I haven't had time to hike anyway, so it's cool. There's also a hot springs up here, which is really cool. There's like, you can go up and like after you go hiking and you're super sore, you can go to this hike, uh, this hot springs. You don't mind? Cool. You're working on getting content complete really soon? Yeah, buddy. Ah, oh, that's great. Hey, what's up? Smart. How long you make this? How long you make, uh, you mean Wraithbinder? I've been making this game for about a year now. Shoot, it's already been a year? Yeah. Yeah, it's come a long ways in the last year. Um, it's finally getting to the point where it's playable and looks starting to look good. Okay, so, and uh, I'm working on voxel shadows today. The shadows look a little bit thin when I'm at certain angles because of occlusion of voxels. So, I'm working on a technique to occlude after I do the shading. Oh, how about this? How about this? We'll just do a, um, a bull needs rotate. Right? And then... 
So we can we can basically load from the rotated cache and say we get the vox and then go needs rotate. And then afterwards we can, after we do the shading, we can do all the rotating and all that. Allowing players to jump, yes. Yeah, I have. Um, gosh, I'm kind of on the fence. I don't know whether jumping would be cool or not. Let's see if this works. Uh, for now, I think I'm sticking with no jumping. But gosh, I haven't. I got the blinking, of course. But yeah, like allowing the players to. This is kind of cool. Like you've got all this the whole 3D terrain and stuff like that. So you can step up and down terrain right now, but you can't step off of things unless if it's a big, big height. Um, of course, uh, it does, the physics all work, like if I go into god mode right here, I can just step off this edge and I'll fall. The gravity is set pretty high right now, so it kind of like, you fall pretty fast. But it would totally be possible to, to add a jump, and maybe that will be something I add. In fact, it's probably something I'll try and see how it feels, and if jumping is really cool, it would actually probably make be a really good thing to put into this game, because it's such a 3D environment, 3D terrain and all that. Hey, that worked. Holy crap. Okay, so we've got, I just made it so basically it can, okay, well, let's do this. Um, start with loading the model, right? You insert into the cache, then you load the model, um, and then you do the shading, and then you do the rotating. Oh, that is causing, shoot, that is doing one, uh. Oh, wait, we can wait, we can wait to do the shading. Okay, let's do that. This will be more efficient this way. So we go if shaded. Okay, so let's try that. And I'll confirm this is like, what I'm trying to do here is make it so it's not um, loading the models any slower than it was uh, before. Okay, cool, this is working. Gosh, this is great. So let's check that out. Let's make sure we're not, we haven't slowed things down too much. I'm not sure how this is gonna work with me live streaming right now, if this is gonna change the, the about the amount of time that it takes. Like it should take about three seconds to load. Let's see, if we do this while we're streaming, I don't know. I guess I, if it's anywhere near the ballpark. Oh shoot. Four and a half seconds. Wow. Gosh, and I can't confirm whether... Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. It's four and a half seconds there. Let's get stash this. Then we'll go back to the old commit and check if it works. Okay, so we're back to the old state. Compile. I'll profile while streaming to get a good uh, baseline, and then we'll go back to the code I was just writing. Okay. So, oh shoot. Three point one six, dude. I I messed it up. Dang. Okay. Let's confirm that one more time. Get stash. Pop that. Rebuild. And confirm this. Shoot, I hope. Oh, wow, I really messed that. Dang, four and a half seconds. 
That's times and a half almost as long. Uh, probably yes. Probably we'll put this on Kickstarter. Just mostly for the the um, the PR and the exposure and the and the the marketing end of it. You know, um, I'm doing all right with funding, um, but it would be great. It's always great to get the word out as in any way as possible. So I'm thinking probably do a Kickstarter just for the marketing. Six minutes to build, yeah. Dang. Yeah, that's something I couldn't, I, I had to, I, that's why I do everything from the command line, and I'm a, I'm a real geek about like uh, compilation speeds, and um, the main thing I learned about, about how to make things compile a lot faster is to not use, well, at least with C++. I, I really, really got into the crazy detail about how to make C++ compile as fast as possible. And the trick is to not use the STL. Don't use string, don't use vector, don't use anything that starts with STD. <laughs> Which, you know, is common sense to a teenager. But um, yeah, if it starts with standard, colon, colon, you're gonna, it's gonna just, it's gonna be so slow to compile. It's because they, their templates, everything in the, in the standard template library is just templated. It's crazy templated too. Like all the templates have like four or five different arguments and it creates a huge amount of code bloat that just, just compiling string itself, which has to be, because it's templatized, it has to go and compile that for every single one of your compilation units. So you have something like world.cpp and you also have like enemy.cpp and you have all these files, right? Every single one of those files has to be, has to recompile the entire string because it's a template. So there's just there's ways to make pretty much any language faster to compile, but especially C++ because um, it's a bit lower level than then um, like Objective-C or uh, C Sharp or, or D or any of the other sort of high, slightly higher level languages. But anyways, yeah, that's, I, I have to have that quick compile time because I'm every day I'm like, barely changing something like oh let's change that int to a one instead of a two and then try that and then i recompile and try that and i'm and, it, and that's how i i don't know that's how my creativity works so this shouldn't be why is this taking so much longer The only thing I can think is that it shades the... Wait a minute. This is all... Yeah. Hmm. If shaded... I guess... Let's try this. If, we're, if we don't even do any of the shading... Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, a Songbringer wasn't my first game, but I learned a lot from making it about compilation speeds because I watched as it was really slow to compile, relatively. Like, Songbringer took about 60 seconds to compile. Um, even like, even a, even a little incremental compile of only like one file took like 15 seconds. Compared to like three seconds for Wraithbinder, it's just like crazy fast for a compilation because because of all that it doesn't use STL anymore. And I did a whole I did a whole video about that too. For anybody watching this video right now on YouTube or you're watching this on my on the live stream, I did a video about co uh, optimizing the compilation speed of C++. So if you look through my YouTube. Uh, it's somewhere in there on optimizing C++ or compilation speeds or something like that. There's a whole video about it. Okay, so no shading. Let's see if it still compiles as fast as it was supposed to. Why would this be compiling any slower? Yeah, so we got no more shading. You can see all the pillars are now like all the same bland color. Let's, let's do a profile, see how fast it loads. Okay, yeah, we're back to 
about three seconds. So this is it. We got the the problem is is somehow this shading is taking longer. So we that's going to be the same, right? It's not going to be any slower to load from its cache. It's not going to take any longer to get the original voxels. Oh, wait, original cache. Hold on, hold on. Original cache. Yeah, this gets it. This is from get vox. Okay, so this already gets set there. All right, all right. So that's already loaded from this, the get vox right there. They haven't been they haven't been modified, have they? Oh. This is the problem. Okay, I just noticed why this is all taking so much longer. Is because we're storing that we're storing into the rotated cache the wrong key, so it's having to rotate all these models way way more. So what we need is a more of like a instead of a K we need like a rotated key. Something specific, right? And then a shaded key, because believe it or not, even just making these keys takes a good chunk of time from the loading. So this is the rotated key. And we're specifically using the rotated key right here. All right? That's important. And then where this is going to be the shaded key. There. Okay, so that should load in 3 seconds. Let's see if that works. First of all, let's let's run the game, make sure it's still shading and looks good and good. Okay, yep. We got nice shaded mo voxels everywhere. And Oh, good. Okay, we're back. All right. Back to about 3 seconds load. All right, great. So, now what all I did there the point of all that was just to separate um, or to, to do the shading before we do the rotating because or we'll, before we do the rotating and the occlusion because the occlusion will require the shaded vo to, to see if the shaded voxels um, have a cast if any of the voxels have a cast shadow we can't occlude that voxel. So what we need is the shaded voxels. So that's gonna be some more model data. Shaded voxels. We could just pass in another 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 set of voxels into the occlude voxels function. So we've got model voxels type ref. This is the all voxels. This is the shaded voxels. Oh, cool. We don't need to make that method definition any different there. We just need to pass in. Oh, shoot. What if we have no shaded for not shading? Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Oh, my God. I just realized something. be able to get more more load speed out of this because I know I'm doing shading of voxels in a different in a different area here when it, it loads okay I, uh do need to take a little note about that. 
Um, try putting non rotated models into the shaded cache. Maybe we could do some blank voxels. There we go, we got some blank voxels. And, uh... So we got that set up, so we got the shaded voxels. Okay, what? Huh. Model voxels type, ref, shaded voxels. Format, pause 2D. What the heck is wrong with this? Oh, one of these might be a const. Oh, yeah, we probably should just make this const. I bet you that's what's causing this little snafu. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Okay, once again, we'll... Oh, what? Oh, there's another place where we occlude voxels. Pre-occlude and occlude. All right, cool. Now we're not doing anything different here. We're just passing in the shaded voxels. So everything should be just how it was and it is. That's great. Okay, now we're to the meat of it all, right? The point of here is to go to the, when we're occluding voxels, we need to check the shaded voxel. And if it is, if it's a shaded voxel, we can't occlude it. Okay, I think I want to do one thing first, and all this is to see if we even have any shaded voxels. Alright, and here, if we if it has shaded and um, shaded voxels voxel dot index we should actually do it like this technically we should be asserting the fact that um, voxel dot index is less than shaded voxels dot size should be I had all these assertions in here when I was doing all this before, but 
just to make sure while we're doing this stream, we'll do it the right way. So if shaded voxels voxel index dot cast shadow, then occluded equals false. We probably should just do this too, if occluded. Do not occlude um, shaded uh, voxels that cast shadows. Oops. And we need one more thing. We'll do bool occluded. We also need a bool. There, now we're marking that we, ca we're, we can cast a shadow. And then, So we don't want to read the color buffer. There. We also, we, I guess we can just do the color here. So voxel, here's my, tr this is the hopefully, the, the trick I'm trying to pull here is to make it so any voxel that is occluded, it should be occluded, but casts a shadow, technically has a color of empty. So that the, it doesn't try and paint the voxel, it only casts a shadow with the voxel. So let's step through this a little bit. We'll de go into debug mode, step through to make sure that it's all these variables are kind of working in the right way. So let's get out. We don't need all these other breakpoints that are here. Um, yesterday's debugging? We don't need yesterday's debugging. It's gone, man. Yesterday's debugging and yesterday's debugging. Today's debugging, a little bit different. We only got one breakpoint we need. Included. All right, all right. Where are we at? Where are we at? We got all the voxel. What what um model is this? Model config. Let's check this out. Okay, we're loading the mail idle. Great. That's a good. That seems like a great one to be debugging because I'm familiar with it. In fact, it's exactly this model that we're loading. Okay, and all right. So. Included and has shaded. Cool. So our shaded voxel, we have all voxels 644, shaded voxel 644. That's right, because we should be look. All the shaded voxels are all of the original voxels. They haven't been included. So we found one that should be occluded, but it casts a shadow. So we set occluded to false, cast shadow to true. We're clearing the voxel color. Let's check out this voxel. All right, this is voxel uh, index zero. It's the very first voxel. Oh, of course, it doesn't cast a shadow because we haven't we haven't applied that yet. But we have a color of three C three C F F, and here we're gonna clear that. So now it's down to zero zero zero. And we should not. Oh, even though we've got a color less than 255 now.
shoot, I got a simpler way to do this. Less less logic involved. Let's take out that and this. And let's read from the color buffer before we do this sort of like quasi occlusion. So that we don't have to worry about this whole variable at all. There, we're just assigning a color anyways, and then here, boom, we go ahead and say it's not occluded and clear its color. Don't care about whether it was in the color buffer or not. All this color buffer thing is, is just for uh, semi-transparent voxels, or sorry, yeah, semi-transparent, as in not fully opaque. All right, let's get that breakpoint. Okay, cool. Where are we at now? We've already done one voxel, okay, so I skipped a voxel there. But anyways, we've got occluded equals false, voxel clear. Let's go ahead and get out of this method. Let's, uh, we, I think this is working, right? There's nothing else really going on in this method that we need to worry about. Okay, here we are. We've gone and we've done the shading, so we've got the shaded voxels. There's 644 shaded voxels. See, they've got this shade variable, highlight variable, and cast shadow variable. Those are all looking great. So, shade is done. Data is the thing we're working on. We've we've loaded data voxel, data's voxels. We've rotated, we've projected, we've occluded. So now data's voxels should be yeah. We've got 387 items in data's voxels, as opposed to 644. However, there, should, there would have been less if um, if we weren't... In fact, let's confirm that really quick. Let's go ahead and keep the same breakpoint, but turn off occluded equals false, and this voxel color dot clear, right? We're only just... De oh. We need something to set a breakpoint on there. Okay. There. So now we'll see how many voxels it would have it would have had after occlusion. Sweet. All right. Same thing. Should be male idle. Cool. And let's let's uh, continue out of this method. One more step there. And data voxels. 171. Yeah. So there's there's less voxels, a lot less when we're doing the occlusion. But this is good. We're, the whole point of this is to try and keep those voxels that are casting shadows, but not have them cause any more uh, weight on the animation system by painting. So that hence the color dot clear. Okay, I think that we're ready to start trying this. Um, now we just need some logic in render components paint that says, hey, if this voxels empty no wait no yeah okay hold on it's not even here it's probably in the voxel engine so we're all all this does is loop over all the voxels set the positions check if the position is valid then call the paint so it's voxel paint not render component but voxel let's go ahead and just look up paint there we go yeah what happened there my c tags are off let's do that again that's better okay solid is if color dot a is greater than or equal to zero if solid set color otherwise do a transparent So what we need to do is shortcut everything else. Okay, I got this. All right. Const bool do cast shadow equals 
color dot a equals 255 or color dot a dot a equals zero this is cast shadow and blah so now we're allowing it to cast a shadow for a voxel that has zero color zero really zero opacity is all that's really checking and then down here do cast shadow it's like that and then we need to wrap all this other code in a check if the colors dot a is greater than zero and paint count really this would be down there not in the casting the shadows part the solid can even be inside this little okay that that should be the the machinery we need to make this dream true Yeah, we're not using the highlight amount anymore. Okay, let's get that compiled and test it out. That's uh, actually. Let's set a breakpoint here so we can test if when this is actually happening. All right. So the only breakpoint we have now is in voxel in Yeah, let's set this breakpoint too. Let's make sure this all works when it actually loads that whole model. Right, okay, there, we're loading male idle. We've done some occlusion, but we've kept some variable, some of these behind. In fact, the very first voxel, yeah, cool. See, we have some of these voxels are just zero. Just means they cast shadows. All right, and now we're doing data volume clear. Store that into the rotated cache. Cool, so it only has to do that once. And if shaded, then we go and apply all this shading. That should be good. What are we? Oh, don't tell me we're okay. Cool. We're good there. Great. Okay, good. So now this is the very first paint. Before we're even even doing anything else, like before we even to show the, show the screen at all. We're doing some paints. So it's painting all these voxels, and we should be in the. We should be rendering e player one human. Good. This is the player. How come player one is id two? Oh, the origin. You remember it. Let's let's fix that real quick. In systems, it creates the origin. Let's do that after we create player ids and all that other kind of stuff. That won't get applied till next time we run, but that's all right. Okay, so we're rendering the paint. We're painting the player one human. We've hit a break point because we've got a voxel that has no color. We've skipped all the painting of that voxel. And we're simply just casting the shadow. So do cast shadow should be true. That's good. And cast shadow is true. Good. Okay, it's just going to cast the shadow from there. Let's make, let's make sure this prepare cast even works. Nothing funky is going on in here, is it? Shadow's great. What do we got? Shadow. Oh, okay, yeah. This is just checking the shadow, the the light strengths. This is getting vectors from the lights. Nothing nothing about this depends on the color of the voxel at all. 
But we should go and also check where it actually does the ca shadow casting. Set a breakpoint there. And we should be able to find this very one that we're on right here. This is cast. What are we look we'll look at here? This is pause 2D 2221 something else. Shadow negative 68. Alright, let's run that. Let's turn off that breakpoint. And now we've gone to the all the end of the whole render system now goes and cast the shadow it has to wait till all the models have been painted before it can do this so now we're casting shadow this first cast should be the one we were just looking at yeah two 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 one sweet okay let's make sure this works like is anything going wrong with the fact that there really is no there's no voxel at the point where we where we started this ray tracing, the ray, yeah, ray, ray casting. Sorry, it's a valid pause. Oh, it's killing the depth on it though. Oh no, 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 that, that's just killing the depth. Oh yeah, okay, that's just killing the depth. It's not allowing a shadow to be cast there because of its depth there. Do we get to this point? J. Okay, let's set a breakpoint there and there. Oh no, so this... Dang, it didn't... It didn't find anywhere for it to shade there. It might have been this. Shoot. Whoa. Okay. All this debugging aside, let's let it fly and see if it looks right. Oh my god, it worked. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, nice. Okay. Are they super thick and nice looking? Kinda. Hold on. Let's get away from that. They're a lot better than they were. So the problem was before, when you, especially when you're standing at this angle right here, when the player you're looking at the player's side, there's a lot of voxels being occluded right there. And his shadow looked really thin and horrible. And now we've got a nice thick shadow coming off there. So I think it's working. Awesome. Okay, is it is it slowing anything down? We're still running at 60 frames a second. It didn't slow down that much when I do this is about how much it yeah, it goes on about 50 frames a second when I'm rotating the camera. Okay. Wow. I think that's all there is to this. I think it I think the system is actually going to work like that. Wow, I'm impressed. How much time do I have left? 5 minutes. Okay, in those five minutes, let's confirm. I was really curious about this whole voxel. Like where we're casting a shadow. Of course, some of them are not gonna be. How would I know? Uh, hmm. I think I can. Hold on, let's set the breakpoint there. So, this is the first voxel that gets painted that is actually occluded. Okay, now, okay, let's look at. 
Oh yeah, the box 2D is a box pointer. That's what I'm talking about. If I track this box 2D, I can't see. Oh shoot, I can't see the. There. Okay. Box 2D is this. 1 1 D 2 2 3 2 2 8. Okay. So now we can track. We can go to those other breakpoints. Actually, let's go to the where it actually goes and casts a shadow and applies a shadow right there. That's where I want to see the breakpoint and I want to check the box 2D for that cast and see if it's this box 2D and I know that this technically is working. It's actually casting shadow. I could visually see that it is working, but I guess I'm just being super pedantic here. Okay, we're running to that breakpoint. Okay. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Of course, we don't need to. We don't need to do that anymore. All right, cool. We got a shadow. What's this shadow box 3D? Nice. Okay, that confirmed it right there. Okay, so it, that first loop through when I was testing out this this ray casting of the shadow um, it was throwing out the first voxel uh, but of course it's not throwing out all the voxels this is actually working so heck yeah alright I guess we can kinda of wrap this up now um, man I'm amazed I, I'm amazed this actually all works <laughs> oh let's check one more thing I, don't, I didn't mess anything up with um, memory did I no, we were still only using about 480 megs. Okay, 480 megs is great. Let's do a code review and check in, and that'll be it for this stream. So what we did was we added the ability to the model to, to keep some voxels without occluding them um, if they're casting shadows. Oh, we can comment out that assert. We know that that's working. Um, is there any other like s stuff I didn't? Any other debugging bits of code I left behind? Oh yeah, there's one right there. In voxel. Get just snip that out of there. Okay, so let's do, now let's review all this code. So yeah, in occlude voxels, we're basically just checking if there's a shaded voxel with the cast shadow. And if so, we can't occlude, but we do not need to paint. Um, then get model, this was the beginning of the stream. I made it so it can, it basically starts with loading the model and then does its shading using a shaded key, yeah, yeah. And then does its rotation and occlusion saves it into the rotated cache and then applies the shading so that's all that's all so that occlude voxels can use the shaded voxels and um, this function I'm not actually using I don't think in the code right now so I can ignore that pretty much and then here this this whole change up to paint is really not too big of a change even though it looks like it's a big change it's not it's basically just checking if the color the color has to be greater, the opacity of the color has to be greater than zero to actually paint it. But when we do cast a shadow, it could either be 255 or zero. There's my alarm to stop the stream. Good timing. All right. This is all looking great. We can keep, we can go create the Skybot again now. Let's go to systems. Turn that back on. We're done. We commit. So this was um, refrain from occluding any voxels that cast shadows. Boom! Oh, I've been wanting to do that for a while. I'm so glad that actually got done in only an hour. I can't believe it. All right, well, thank you for watching this stream. Thank you for all your support.
as as in every way you do you guys thanks for thanks for the support i know you guys are out there so anyways um appreciate you and we'll catch you on the next live stream which will be god knows when um yeah that's it thanks for watching cheers see ya